finish this excellent morning session, I am pleased to introduce Luz Teresa. Luz Teresa is a full professor at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México and visiting professor at the Universidad Federal da Paraíba here in Brazil. Professor de Teresa is an expert in control theory and will present the lecture whose title is New Controllability of Couple Stokes Equation. Luz, the word is yours. Muito obrigada. So, uh, look, thank you very much for the invitation to this nice workshop. So, I will talk about uh, this uh, problem and null controllability uh, problem for uh, couple Stokes equations. But I <clears throat> will start recalling you some um, results in the finite uh, dimension case. So in the ODE situation. So when, when we have an ordinary differential equation uh, with L, a matrix uh, N times N, and B, a matrix N times M, we want to act on uh, this equation by means of the control V and the matrix B, so uh, to, to get an exact uh, controllability objective. That is, for every uh, initial datum, my final datum in our N, and uh, we look for a control V such that the solution of this ODE satisfies a time capital T that uh, y1, it's exactly the point y1. Um, in particular, in, in, in ordinary differential equations, we know that uh, the system is controllable if it is controllable at any time. And there is this uh, result uh, from Kalman that says that uh, this system will be controllable if and only if the rank of a particular matrix that we construct using as columns matrix B, so the one that appears in the control, okay? And then the second column will be the matrix L time B that is, intrinsic in the system. So L is this, the, the matrix that describes the system. And then we continue until the power N minus one of the matrix L and we multiply it by B. So if the rank of this matrix is N, so it's the maximum rank it can be, it can have, okay? we will uh, have the exact controllability of the system. So in particular, if we want uh, to work with uh, two couple equations, for example, with uh, this uh, coupling matrix, so we have that in the first equation, so this reads as, uh, okay, so y, y1 dot equal to a2, okay, blue plus b1, b1, and y2 dot equal to b2 v2, okay? So what says Kalman run condition is that in order to control the system, 
we need to have uh, this term non-vanishing. So P2 cannot be zero, okay? So I will recall you this result later, okay? So we need some kind of coupling in order to have a controllability of the system. If, for example, B2 is zero, so the, the, the equations are uncoupled, so you cannot act by any way on the second equation, so you cannot drive the solution to one prescribed uh, state, okay? So, in uh, infinite dimensions, I can write uh, the abstract setting as L an operator, okay? And B also a bounded operator on a, for example, Hilbert space. Of course, you can generalize that in, in Banach spaces. So you have uh, several definitions and uh, some of the control uh, problems that you can state are possible or not dependent on the equation. So you have exact controllability that's for two prescribed uh, datum in the Hilbert space, you want to reach exactly uh, Y1. So this will be exact controllability. Approximate controllability is uh, just a density that's, that you want. So you want to reach uh, Y1, uh, not exactly, but as close as uh, you prescribe it with this epsilon. And in between these two definitions, you have uh, null controllability that is just uh, driving the solution at time capital T to zero, to rest. So you can leave the system there. And if you don't act on the system, it is in rest. So this is a good uh, position that you can have, okay? So uh, in, in, in this uh, conference, I will be, uh, talking about uh, the problem of null controllability, so driving the solution to zero, of uh, coupled Stokes equations. So here I'll, I will have a matrix A. I, I am not going to describe it now, the matrix. This is going to be done later. I also will be acting with uh, a matrix D and V will be my control. And recall that in the case of Stokes equations, you are in Rn with n generals two or three. In other cases, just like a uh, mathematical exercise. But uh, in practice, you will think of n equal to two or uh, three. So you have a pressure that goes from uh, my domain. So I, I don't remember if I put here, uh, I will work on uh, Q equal to omega times zero uh, capital T with omega regular enough. And uh, here I am considering a coupled equation. So each Y in fact, uh, has y1 to ym as equations, but uh, this uh, y1 and y2 ym belongs also to rn, so our vectors, okay, in rn. And my matrix is a matrix that is related with the number of equations that I am uh, controlling or considering and the dimension uh, of the space in, in which I am taking the Stokes uh, equations. So I am considering 
divergence free uh, equations of each component, if you want, of each uh, equation. And uh, again, an initial data in a particular space where everything is well placed. So, what is my objective? I want to drive to rest this. M stock systems at time capital T, and I only want to act on the first stock system. So D is not any any one; it's a particular matrix. So it, it's going to be a vector one zero zero zero. Okay, so it's similar, more or less, that that the one I put for the ODE, and I want more. I want to act in the first stock systems, but only with n minus one components of these stock systems. So if we are in R2, for example, I will control only with one component, with one control, all the components. So 2M equations, okay? So uh, this is part of the, the, the difficulties I will face. Okay, so what do we know about this kind of problems? So a um, long time ago with uh, Manolo Gonzalez Burgos, we prove uh, a result of null controllability uh, of the heat equation when you have a cascade system. What uh, is that? So in fact, we are looking for something that uh, satisfies the Kalman rank condition. So what we get is we want to act in the first equation. Okay, so here you don't have anything except the first, the control, and then your solution to the first equation enters in the solution to the second equation as an, in fact, a new control, okay? So this is going to be like a new control. And then you solve this equation, you enter to the third equation, then Y2 is going to act as a control. So you have the, the, the previous equation with the control as the solution to the previous one, and you are going in a cascade, even if it's finite, it's a cascade, a finite cascade, okay? So in this situation, we were able to prove the null controllability of this system. In fact, we prove something better. So we prove that when you have a, a, a general coupling and with uh, potentials in L infinity, you are, it is possible to control acting only with one control if you have that this component, so A to one, A, I, I minus one are positive or negative, also negative in a small uh, open subset of the control region. So in this situation, you are able to solve this control problem, okay? We are going back uh, to our problem. So uh, what we want to do is something similar, but first I have to recall some results concerning the uh, Stokes equation. Okay, so for omega a bounded and simply connected open sets, regular enough. And again, here we have again Q equal to omega times zero T and our boundary. 
we have uh, in this uh, context uh, uh, the spaces of uh, diversion three and uh, the space H10 diversion three. So we can consider in, in this situation only one Stokes system. So now I am not thinking about this couplet Stokes equations, okay? So I have my Stokes systems with a diverg divergence free e equal to zero on the boundary and some initial data. And again, I may ask is, if it is possible to control the system by means, control to zero the system by means on an appropriate uh, control. So the, the result I am interested uh, for the, the objective of my talk is this one due to Corona and Guerrero. And they prove that there exists a, uh, constant that depends only on the domain and on the control region, such that for every initial data in this space, space H and every I between one and N, it exists a control V, uh, but in fact, this control, I put it, it is in L2 to the power N, but in fact, I can choose VI equal to zero for one of the components of the, the Stoke system, okay? So in fact, the norm of this control V in L2 can be bounded by an exponential with dependence on T of uh, the initial datum of the Stokes system. And the solution is driven to zero. So I will recall you some of the main points of, on the proof of this result, because I'm going to use part of uh, the techniques in the proof of, uh, of the result I am going to talk about, okay? So as, as you, most of you know, the controllability, null controllability of uh, in this moment, the um, Stokes uh, system is uh, uh, characterized by an observability inequality for the action system. So you can see that uh, this is a Stokes uh, system only backward on time. So we start at capital T, time capital T, and with this minus, we are going backwards in time. So this is the joint system to the, um, the system I want to control. So to uh, this one, okay? So uh, it is well known that the null controllability of my system five here is uh, equivalent to prove this observability inequality. So here you can see that in fact, I put this in K different from I because I am only using uh, some of the components of the Stokes uh, solution, the adjoint uh, Stokes equation, okay? So I am not using all the components, but uh, it's every one but one, okay? So uh, the, the idea uh, from Coron and Guerrero is to prove this uh, observability inequality. And uh, to do this, they use uh, the divergence uh, free condition to get that in fact, so you have here a pressure. So this is always a problem when working with, um, with the Stokes or Navier Stokes, okay? 
So the thing is that using the divergence free condition, you have that the Laplacian of the pressure is equal to zero. So they apply the operator gradient of Laplacian to uh, the, the first component of the equation, not to all the equation, only to the first component of the equation and use Carleman estimates to the heat equation verified by psi one, that is the gradient of the Laplacian of phi one, okay? So for young people, uh, no, okay, before doing that. So in this, uh, when, when you have this equation, uh, you don't have boundary data. You don't know anything about the solution on the boundary. You may have initial datum on that, but you don't know anything about the solution on the boundary. So you need uh, some Carleman estimates that includes that part, okay? So that's for young people. So for all the, the young students that are attending the conference today, just to say that Carleman inequalities are some weighted inequalities that are related with a differential operator and that uh, estimate with some weight the norm of the solution. And Carleman introduced them in 1939 uh, with some exponential weights to show uh, the uniqueness of solutions with uh, some smooth coefficients in R2. Now, in, in these moments, nowadays, uh, these kind of inequalities are uh, really used uh, it's a very, very powerful technique for uh, inverse and control problems. So, uh, in, in the case of the, the heat equation, we will need uh, the construction of a particular function. And the idea of this function, for example, if you are in uh, the case of dimension one is you want to uh, control on this small set uh, in blue little omega. So you want to con construct a function that is uh, non-negative in all my set omega, okay? And reaches its maximum precisely in uh, my, my small uh, set control region uh, in blue little omega. In fact, it, it can be that you have uh, even a maximum and a minimum. The thing is that if you have a, a, some uh, critical points, there are inside the little set omega, okay? So, uh, what you have is that this function is uh, C infinity of to the boundary. It is uh, positive in omega and the normal derivative is negative in the, in the boundary. So this is why we have this. It is not necessary to have equal to zero in the boundary. Sometimes you can put it over zero, so to reach some positive uh, number, there's no problem. But this is very important. So the gradient is positive, so it's not null inside, uh, outside the little control region on. Okay, so this is very important in uh, Carleman inequalities for the heat equation. 
So after that, having this function that is in the shape I, I'll I just tell you, you can construct some weights, so some, some functions, new functions. So uh, this alpha and this psi, okay? And uh, so which are the, the, the good things about uh, this function? So one of them, of the, the, the most important things about alpha and psi is that when, when you uh, consider the exponential of minus two s, s is going to be a parameter I'm going to use alpha multiplied by, by psi at any potential. I don't know, you are, you are going to have some powers there, but only with that, because we have this exponential. When going to capital T, observe that we are dividing by T to the power R and T minus small t to the power L. Uh, so, this is going to vanish as when t goes to zero or to capital T, okay? So if you imagine you're going to use this exponential to minus two s alpha, and you're going to substitute in some equations and do integration by parts and ta ta ta, then when you integrate with respect to t, integrate by parts with respect to t, this is going to vanish. So this is, you're, you're not having this uh, bad terms in, in t equal to zero and t equal to capital T. So in general, for uh, the Stokes equation, you, you may use L equal to four and this is perfect, but I put this L because we will need L larger than than, than three, okay? Uh, we will need, in fact, L larger than 10. But in general, the next inequality is valid for any L larger than three, for example. So uh, in 2009, uh, Immanuel of Puel and Yamamoto proved for a heat equation, so you, you see, here we have a heat equation, okay? But I am not prescribing boundary data, okay? So for this heat equation, you can prove, this is my Kahneman estimate, the one uh, I am interested in, okay? You can prove that the solution to this equation uh, to the square with this weight and this S psi and also the gradient square with S minus one psi minus one is less or equal than this local estimate. So you will have a local estimate that is similar to the observability inequality we want to prove, but you will have these red terms that are the, the data you don't know on the graph, okay? And since you have a right-hand side that is not zero, you have to estimate also these terms that depend on the right-hand side, okay? So, uh, we are going to use this, or, or, or in fact, Corona and Guerrero used this kind of estimate to uh, solve the observability inequality for the Stokes, for a single Stokes system, okay? And uh, what they do is, for this gradient Laplacian of the first component of the, the Stokes system, so this is Psi 1, uh, they work with this Kahneman inequality. So they are able to obtain uh, this kind of weighted inequality. So here we have phi one to the square, gradient of phi one to the square with the corresponding weight in front, okay? 
and the Laplacian to the square, and what they are able to show. So here you can see that you have these powers, s to the five lambda to the six, and here I have s to the th three lambda to the four for the Laplacian square. So I, I am able to absorb this term that is on the right hand side in this term. And you have some local estimates with the Laplacian of phi one and phi one. So we don't want this term, okay? We want only this. And you have the boundary terms. So these are uh, described later. So now everything here is for the first component of, of the Stokes system. So what are we using? So they use, Corona and Guerrero use, the uh, divergence free of the system. That means that this uh, norm, weighted norm of the partial derivative uh, with respect to x2 of phi2 is equal to this norm of the partial derivative of phi1. And here observe that <clears throat> my weights are uh, the alpha star and the psi star. Why? Because we are considering something that do not depend on the x variable. So here, alpha star is this maximum. So it depends on t, but not on x. And psi star also is a minimum. So it depends minimum on x, okay? So, you uh, you will be able from this, so this is equal to this because this weight doesn't depend on x, and this is bounded from below, from above, by the norm with the complete weight with the gradient of phi one, okay? Then you can use the Poincaré inequality with phi two. So the second component of the Stokes equation. So I recall that we are in the case n equal to two. And you get with the same way. So I, I have here S six lambda eight, as I have here, <clears throat> is bounded from the Poincaré inequality by this. So uh, you can put all together and get something more or less. So, but you have more terms. So you have the boundary term. So I will tell you only how to work with that. Okay, so you have some, some powers in the weights. So what you have to go do is to go to the Stokes equation now, really to the Stokes, not to the heat equation, but to the Stokes equation, and then uh, multiply by an appropriate weight that depends on T, but not on, on X. Okay, so you will have a non-homogeneous Stokes equation and the initial datum will be zero because of the weight vanishes at capital T, okay? So, uh, okay, working with that, you are able to estimate everything. So the key points is use that the Laplacian of the pressure is equal to zero. So you can transform uh, with an appropriate operator, the Stokes equation onto a heat equation. You don't know the boundary terms. So you perform estimates on the first component 
of this heat equation and uh, you have boundary terms so there you have to use energy estimates for the Stokes equation that is related to this one and you can work with the weights and use divergence free condition in order to estimate the second component of uh, the Stokes system. So these are the uh, main ideas. So what uh, does uh, it exist in the literature regarding coupled Stokes uh, equations? So there are uh, some, some results mainly related with insensitizing controls or to Stackelberg strategies, uh, some from Guerrero, uh, Carreño, Angay, and Montoya and myself that we work with on a Stackelberg strategy. And uh, in, in those situations, uh, they were, and we were able to, um, to work with uh, this kind of couplet systems. So you can see that uh, in this coupling, we have that one equation goes in one direction. So theta is going in the forward time direction and phi is going in the backward direction of time. But here, theta is equal to zero at uh, the initial datum. And this is important to the results that we are able to obtain here. And then as far as I know, these are the, the, the results treating coupling, couplet equations. So what uh, we did is the following. So we will try to generalize the result with uh, Manolo Gonzalez Burgos and myself to the case of uh, M couplet Stokes equations. And uh, of course, we uh, want to uh, have the same kind of uh, cascade system. Okay. But, uh, okay, here, I, in fact, we have, since, since we have uh, uh, this n-dimensional Stokes uh, uh, equation at, at each step, we need to consider the, uh, the, the identity matrix of n times n uh, in each uh, coefficient and a i j is going to be a constant. Uh, we will see that we don't know how, what to do when a is not a constant. Okay, it depends on, on time. It is possible to work with that. We don't know what to do with uh, these uh, coefficients when these coefficients depend on, on, on space. But let's see what, what we have done. Okay, our main result is uh, similar to our result with uh, Manolo and also to the result uh, of Coron Guerrero. So we are able to control all the system acting only in the first equation because uh, here D is uh, this uh, vector. So we are only acting on the first equation. Okay, so under these conditions, we will have uh, the Kalman rank condition, okay? Because we have that A, A I, I minus one is different from zero. So this uh, sub diagonal is non zero, okay? So this is precisely a cascade equation, okay? And <clears throat> we will be able to uh, control with a control V, but Vika, 
So I can choose a K between one and N such VK is equal to zero. And the corresponding solution Y that we have N times M uh, components, okay, in total, all of them satisfy that Y at capital T are equal to zero. So, which are the main ingredients? Again, we have to work with the adjoint uh, equation. We want to prove an observability inequality, and we are going to use the, the, the Coron Guerrero technique. Okay, so we will prove this inequality. Okay, so. What uh, I am saying here, I am saying that I can, so this, this is J are the components of the first Stokes system. And I am saying that, yeah, that I am proving the observability inequality and in order to prove this observability inequality, I only need to consider uh, J from one to N, but I can eliminate the K component, the one I choose, okay? And this observability inequality, so here we have all the elements of my system and all the components of each Stokes uh, step. Okay, so uh, what we are able to do, okay, is uh, again to work with the first component of all the equations. So here I am taking all the equations, okay. And in fact, what we, we do is to uh, use, here we need more. Why? I am not really sure, but uh, we, we tried with only the gradient of the Laplacian and we were not able to, to eliminate all, all the terms that we, we had. And also we try to modify the powers of S and lambda at each step, trying to, but we cannot eliminate one component. So we can eliminate the solutions to all the equations, but not the last step that is to eliminate one component. So what do we do? We proceed as Coron and Guerrero, and we use the fact that the Laplacian of all the pressures in the system are zero, and we apply uh, the gradient gradient of Laplacian to the first components of all the M equations. So we will consider this. And then use the Carleman estimates to the heat equation with no boundary data. And then we will need, here is important the fact that L is greater than 10, to estimate, you remember these terms in red, I put the boundary terms in red, we need to estimate these terms. So this is only, using this uh, a, a Stokes equation. And then uh, we are able to estimate these boundary terms by uh, this term plus this term, okay? And uh, then we have to uh, estimate this, uh, this not very beautiful uh, terms that we have in the uh, right hand side of our Carleman uh, estimate, okay, because we, we get this kind of terms. 
So this is using like local energy estimates and young inequality with epsilon and one over epsilon. So you're able to put epsilon and the same weights. So these weights appear in the left, left hand side. So since you can put this epsilon, they can be absorbed in the other side on the left hand side. And then you reduce, so you pass from square to non-square, no? But you have to pay something, anything is free. So you have to use from small omega zero uh, included in a new that is going to be uh, compactly uh, in, embedded in, in little omega. So you, you need this kind of inclusions in all the steps, okay? Uh, so uh, then uh, we can use the, the divergence free condition and again, use uh, the fact that this part does not depend on X. So you can use the divergence free, then bound by the term of this component is bounded by the gradient, okay? And uh, we are going to obtain uh, a complete estimate. So you can see that here I have only estimates on the first component of each equation. And here, this phi is are all the components of all the equations because I have a phi i here, okay? And all of this, this thing, this i1 of phi one i is bounded by uh, these uh, local terms but we are including all of them. That depends only on the first component of all the equations, okay? So what we have to do is now, so until this point where we are really using uh, the same technique as Corona and Angare. So now we need to uh, uh, eliminate uh, the different Laplacians, okay, of uh, the M equations. So you, we have to, to see the equation satisfied by the Laplacian of phi i, M. So we have that. So here I put a weight psi i that is equal to one in this uh, little set omega hat so in omega hat and zero in omega minus o so here i am considering so this okay so psi one is uh, a uh, regular function, good enough. And you use uh, exactly this equation, an integration by parts to eliminate one term to the other, okay? So you will get something uh, again like that. So we, we, you will get an epsilon and terms, uh, uh, of the gradient and of the Laplacian M, but with this epsilon, they, they are going to disappear with the terms in the uh, left-hand side. And uh, all of them disappear. The red part is going to disappear. And then you will have like uh, an M minus one local estimate and uh, again, M minus two, uh, from one to M minus two local estimates, okay? But I can disappear this one. So 
use do, doing that, I don't have this term, okay? So now I have to disappear the term M minus one, you proceed exactly like that, and you will get bigger powers of S and Psi, but you can proceed in the same way. And finally, you will have that this uh, Karleman estimate that includes only the first component of phi with Laplacian gradient of Laplacian of phi one on M do 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 plus the terms of the whole stock solution uh, of M but to the power two only the phi to the square are bounded by a, a large exponent of S and I will get the Laplace here, but only the first component of the first equation. Okay, so we are almost done. We have just to eliminate this Laplacian. And again, we work with this kind of, of, of function. Again, psi tilde is equal to one in O m and zero in omega in in so in large omega minus this omega tilde so we have to do this several times and then again using uh, the only integration by parts you say see that you get Laplacian that you can absorb with an epsilon and you get a gradient that is going to appear with a biggest uh, power of the, the of the weight and this term also disappears with using young with an appropriate epsilon and you will get a gradient of phi one so now you have all what you need on the left hand side and on the right hand side only a local turn with the gradient of phi i and again you integrate by parts doing the same kind of argument and so this is all but we have uh, several open problems okay so the the first and um, I don't know, I, um, and the thing I, I, I want to, to get to that is what to do if you have a i j in L infinity or in C infinity. There's no problem of regularity. The thing is if you try to use this technique with a, a coupling, let's say if you have minus, I think minus Laplacian of phi equal to zero minus, I am just here, A of X, here is Psi, sorry, Phi, we don't know what to do with that. It's it, because you have two, uh, of, of course you don't have that, you have the Stokes, okay? It, if I don't put um, the correct uh, equation, it's not seen, okay? You have that. So we don't know what to do that because we have to transform the equation using at least the, 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 the gradient of the Laplacian. So you will have uh, terms that appear there and you have to take the derivatives of that and uh, you don't know what to do with the terms that don't have derivatives in phi. Okay, so this is one of the open problems and we are working with a fixed uh, point argument with uh, Takeo uh, to reach the Navier-Stokes coupled equation result. And also we are working on hierarchy control, uh, but eliminating one component. So, muito obrigado.
Thank you, Luiz e Tereza, for the, my talk. Uh, any question? I have, I have a question. Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, Lutz. Nice Bye. to hear you from, from Marrakech. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. If uh, you considered uh, this uh, stocks equation with the directly conditions. Yes. Is there any result of, uh, or is it, uh, it has a sense uh, that we can consider another boundary condition, for example, Fourier or Neumann? Yes, yes, there are some results. I, uh, I don't remember now, Osses, uh, Montoya, I think, have some results about uh, non euclid boundary conditions and things like that. Yes, it's, okay. it's you, can, you, can, you can try other, Boundary condition, it's not easy, <laughs> no, but, mm -hmm. but you can obtain some results. Uh, somebody asked if it is possible to do the same with a boundary control. Uh, it, I, I don't think it's possible, the, the techniques, because even in the case of the, uh, uh, at least with this technique, huh? uh, even in the case, uh, of coupled equations, we don't know what to do with a boundary condition, with a boundary control on one of the equations, except in some very, very particular uh, cases, no? if, for the heat equation. For Stokes equation, I think it's very, very difficult for the moment. At least with the techniques we know, it is very different. So somebody asks, is the domain is bounded? Yes, yes, the, the domain is bounded. That is why I can use Poincaré uh, inequality. Okay. Yes, I have a question also. Um, so yes, th thank you for, for your nice talk. So uh, can you replace in your theorem or in your strategy, uh, coupling terms of uh, zero order by coupling terms of order one? That is to say, you replace uh, uh, coefficient a e g by, uh, let's say, b a j times derivative of uh, of the solution of the of the Stokes Stokes equation. Sergio Guerrero did something like that with like the rotational or something like that, and he was able to do it. Okay, in okay. the paper of. Uh, of he published for insensitizing control for the Stokes system. You can do some things, but I am not sure how much. We okay. are, in fact, uh, this is the, the first problem. We are, uh, this is a co-direction of a PhD thesis of Jing Jing Wu and uh, it's Takeo Takahashi and myself that I are working with her in this uh, problem. So we are, starting <laughs> all this program. So it's new, it's really new what I am presenting to you. Some part of the things we haven't explored anything, no? We are just there, <laughs> but it's a, a, a good question. I yes. will discuss with Takeo and Jing <laughs> about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Luz. Thank you everybody. Mm -hmm.